Hello and welcome back to the Django Celery series. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at what Celery defines as the result backends. As the name suggests, the result backends allows us to store the results of previous tasks. So as you might imagine, Celery does support multiple different types of backends uh, for storing results in, for example, a database, for example, or if we're using Redis instance, that's also possible. So we'll have a look specifically here at utilizing Django and then more specifically looking at how to store results utilizing the Django database. Another option in Django, there are many options which we'll cover in the next couple of slides, but Another option that we're going to demonstrate here is utilizing the Django Cache Framework. So I'll take you through a quick introduction to the Cache Framework in Django, and then we'll just go through a basic configuration where you can save Celery results. Okay, so let's go ahead. First of all, we're going to install Celery results backend. So if you haven't got the uh, a package or if you haven't got an application ready to do this, you can download the application in the repository. There's a link in the description. So go ahead if you like and download the repository in the description. If you do install that package, you'll find that there's going to be a requirements text which you'll need to install. And also I've left a commands text here just to help you out. I have a few commands if you've forgotten them, if you're not familiar with some of the different commands that we've used so far, you will find three tasks that correspond to the different tasks that you'll find in this tutorial series. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install the Django Celery results package. I've already started that operation here just by running the pip install Django Celery results. So once that's done, you'll need to then head over to the settings file in the uh, in this case, the core. So this is the core application settings. And you'll just need to add that to the installed apps. So next up, we're just going to create the Celery database tables. So we just need to migrate this. So this package comes with a set of tables that we just need to migrate. So we can migrate that individually like this. I was going to create a a Windows path is not iterable. If you do get that problem on one of the repositories that you download from the GitHub Very Academy account, just try and reinstall the application again and just go through the process. I found that that was the only way to get that problem uh, solved. So moving on. So once you've installed the tables for the Celery results, go ahead and start the server and go into the Django administration. So again, if you're using this repository, the password and username is just the letter A. So you can see that upon installing the Celery results package, we have a new table available, task results, and we've got a few different options here. So let's just go ahead and start the servers and run a task and see what happens in this area. So if you haven't already done so, you are going to need a message broker for this. So in the previous tutorials, we did install RabbitMQ and I've left some information here on how to get the, the MQ started. So here again, I'm just running it from this link here. So I've installed RabbitMQ into the default installation. So RabbitMQ is on. If you've got any other message broker that you're using, obviously turn that on first. And then we just need to go ahead and create a task. So we've already built a task already. Remember, we've got this Celery Pile file here and detailing an instance of Celery called Core. And we went ahead also, I didn't really explain, we also utilized the init.py file here. Um, like it says here, this will make sure the app is always imported. So that saves us a little bit of time. And then in task one, there is a task file, which is a really simple shared task where we're just adding two numbers together. So all we're going to do is just start the instance of celery and just add two numbers and just see what the results and see what's stored in our back end so i've got test celery turned on you can see here we've got a few tasks here that we're going to run so we're going to add run this task here 
So go ahead and go into the shell and we'll just run a simple task. As I keep saying, you just need to go into the commands text. You'll find this simple task uh, script right there. So let's um, add that in and then we're just going to add these two numbers together. And if we go back into the Celery instance here, you can see that that's been completed. So the final task is just to head over to the settings here in your core application and then just add this new line here. So we need to define the Celery results backend. So here we're just using the Django DB. So once that's done, now I've already have Celery open. So you're going to need to just close that and restart the instance. And then we can go ahead and just bring that in again. And then go into our admin and hopefully that's now captured that if we refresh. And there we go. So we have our first task recorded in the database. So much of this data here is fairly self-explanatory. We have a task ID, the task name, completed date state, the task state and the worker that was utilized. And we can actually then drill down into the task ID to give us a little bit more information. So you can see here results encoding, the task positional arguments that we utilized and result data. So that gives us a little bit more information about the task that's been completed. So we can see that the Django Celery results package is a convenient way of storing results from our Celery worker. But of course, it's not the only way we can store results. So let's explore the Django cache storage for this data. So a cache is a special storage space for temporary files that potentially makes the device browse or application run faster and more efficiently. So take, for example, a query that the user runs. Um, imagine we had a million people running that query. Instead of it coming from the database, which can be quite costly and slow, we can put it into some fast cache area or fast cache area, which we can then access that data a lot more quicker and efficiently. So here in Django, we can configure the cache in many different ways. We could potentially utilize database cache, file system cache, or indeed the memory. If you read through the Django documentation, you'll notice that it mentions memcached, which is a very powerful memory-based cache server. And it points out that in the documentation that Facebook and Wikipedia utilize this technology. So on a much smaller scale, that's not necessarily required, but it's something that potentially you could explore. So alternative options for Django cache that we can configure is the database caching. So we can store the data, cache data in a database or indeed databases. And additionally, we have the file system caching. So here we can serialize data and store essentially each cache value into separate or multiple files. And in addition to that, we have the local memory caching and also for developmental purposes, the dummy cache. So here we can, in the dummy cache, we can, which doesn't actually cache, it just implements a cache interface without doing anything. And this can be useful, like I said, uh, while developing, if you want to have this facility in place or if it's something that your application requires, but it isn't something that you necessarily need to do on a development server. So let's go ahead and create a cache database. So here in the settings in the core again, we create this Celery cache backend and define it as default. And then we create our cache here, so default, and then we define the backend, which is going to be the Django core cache backend DB database cache. And then we have the location. So this is a table that's going to actually hold the data. And I've called this cached DB or cache DB. So now we need to go and actually build this table. So here we're going to run the manage pi file and also command. And then we're going to go and utilize create cache table. Sorry, you can't see that because of the long uh, path here. And then I'm going to go for a dry run and that's going to actually show us what's going to be developed or built. So go ahead and build that or commit that. And you can see here, we're going to create a table called cache DB and we've got the cache key value and expires. So that's what we're currently going to create and how it knows obviously where 
the fact it's going to create this table is because we've set it here, the location. So we can go ahead and just commit that. So obviously we don't need the dry run. So that's going to build the table. So just for simplicity, you can see here in this SQLite Explorer, the database have opened up the SQLite database and we have a table here called CacheDB. So if you want to keep track of the tasks or states, Celery needs to store or send the states somewhere. So there are several built-in result backends to choose from a natural fact. For example, we could use SQL Alchemy, Django, obviously the Django RM. Here, maybe you're using a Mongo database or I mentioned memcached or memcache. Uh, Redis, for example, could also be utilized. So there's plenty of different backup or um, storages that are available to store the results. So this tutorial represents a small building block of knowledge as we further develop our understanding and knowledge of Celery or utilizing Celery in Django. So again, thank you for watching. Hopefully this has opened up a few different avenues, particularly Django Cache Framework. The Cache Framework is something that we haven't covered yet in any Django series, but it's definitely something that we need to look closer at uh, further along the line. So again, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next tutorial.